An awesome new site for typeface inspiration, Grayscale Gorilla launches something big, and your chance for After Effects startup screen fame has arrived. It's Motion Mondays. Hold on to your butts. But first, do you know why in North America we have weird frame rates like 29.97 and 23.98? Stick around until the end to see just how well you know your MoGraph trivia. Fonts Ninja is a great new resource for designers offering a Pinterest-like experience for typefaces. The site's simple design features an endless scroll of font cards showing various sizes and weights of typefaces. Click on a card to see bigger previews, additional weights, and even subfamilies like condensed or extended versions. What's really cool is the similar fonts feature, perfect for finding alternatives. You can filter by style, contrast, and even price. Fonts Ninja also offers a free browser extension that lets you identify fonts on any website just by hovering over text. With a free account, you can also bookmark fonts and save them to lists. This is super useful for designers who often spot fonts that they like on other websites. The site's simplicity is its strength. Sometimes that's all you need. So if you're font curious like me, definitely check out Fonts Ninja. Blender 4.2 LTS, that means long-term support, has officially landed and it's a doozy. Our buddy Southern Shoddy, AKA Remington Markham, did a lightning fast walkthrough of the new features. And let me tell you, it's really impressive. The star of the show is a new version of the real-time EV renderer with wild quality improvements. As a Blender newbie, I'm fascinated by its two built-in renderers, EV and Cycles. EV's real-time capabilities are astounding, giving you a pretty close approximation of Cycles output. There are also new rigging features, modeling tools, texturing options, and a boatload of UI improvements. To celebrate, Blender released a showcase reel submitted by users worldwide, demonstrating the software's versatility. It's clear the Blender has become a 3D heavyweight, and while it may still lack some MoGraph tools that we're used to, there are plugins available. Oh, and Heads up, School of Motion has officially begun production on our first Blender course. So stay tuned for more Blender content from us. I recently stumbled upon a killer piece for Hulu directed by Mac Primo with help from Christopher Webb at FXWRX Studio. This gem is a perfect blend of live action and design elements featuring grungy textures and spot on editing. What really caught my eye is how it feels like a throwback to that mid 2000s style that originally sucked me into motion design. While recent trends have leaned towards abstract, illustrative, and 3D styles, this piece reminds us of motion design's incredible versatility. The FXWRX site offers a great behind the scenes look showing how they shot the talent on a simple green screen turntable before compositing and layering to create the final piece. It's a testament to how simple techniques can yield stunning results when combined with creativity and great design. I think the spot is a refreshing reminder that sometimes looking back can help us move forward in design. Yes, it's cheesy, but it's true. Kudos to Christopher Webb and the team for this killer piece of work. Our awesome School of Motion student and alumni group recently shared a treasure trove of free audio resources, and I had to pass them along. Bill Chamberlain kicked off this amazing thread asking for free audio resources, and our community delivered. Donna Gibson recommended Pixabay, offering royalty-free images, videos, and audio, even for commercial use. Jeremy Schubach gave a shout out to Soundly, a tool that I've used for years that manages your sound effects libraries and provides access to their enormous collection, some of which is free. Natalia Shear pointed us to freesound.org, boasting hundreds of thousands of free sounds, while Anthony Welgamode suggested freemusicarchive.org for both royalty-free music for purchase and free original music. Our friends at Motion Array provide free sound effects tailored for motion design, and longtime friend of School of Motion, Liam Clisham, reminds us about the free assets that come with your Adobe Creative Cloud subscription. These resources can save you time and money while adding that extra layer of polish to your project. So go ahead and give your design some audio love, and if you've got other resources you know about, go ahead and leave a comment and share them with the community. Maxon has just dropped their July update for Maxon 1, and it's packed with goodies. Cinema 4D gets a boost with updates to its integrated particle system, simulation tools, and scene nodes. Redshift now boasts a new distance shader, allowing for shading effects based on an object's proximity to others. The relatively new Maxon Studio app, an After Effects template engine released in June, has also received some love with new capsules, templates, to spice up your After Effects projects. It's like Hanukkah in July for motion designers. These updates showcase Maxon's commitment to keeping their tools cutting edge and user-friendly. So if you're a Maxon user, make sure to update your app and dive into these new features. 
Our pals at Grayscale Gorilla have unleashed something they've been cooking up for years, the Grayscale Gorilla Studio app. This desktop application is like a direct line to GSG's entire asset library, connecting seamlessly with your favorite 3D program. Gone are the days of downloading gigabytes of assets just to use one HDRI. Now you can browse, download, and import 3D models and more in just a few clicks. The company claims it's 10 times faster than the old method, it has an improved search tool, and you'll never miss a release of new assets. There's a connector plugin for Cinema 4D, Blender, Unreal Engine, and Houdini, but the assets can be used anywhere. In fact, motion designer Mike Pindara even showed how he's using GSG textures inside After Effects for quick grunge maps and for HDRIs to light 3D objects in the new After Effects 3D engine. It's like having a 3D asset vending machine right on your desktop. So if you're a GSG Plus member, download the new studio app and let us know what you think of it. It's time to shine a spotlight on our School of Motion student of the week, Greg Middlemiss, a freelance photographer and filmmaker who recently completed our Cinema 4D Ascent course. Greg's final project, a tongue-in-cheek explainer video for Procrastinate, showcases a variety of techniques taught in the class. What sets Greg's project apart is the unique style he used for his project. The textures and lighting give the piece a techie sci-fi feel that's a refreshing departure from what we normally see on this assignment. With smooth transitions and slick camera moves, Greg's project demonstrates how his photographer's eye translates beautifully into the 3D realm. Now, armed with both amazing photography skills and formidable Cinema 4D chops, we cannot wait to see what Greg cooks up next. So congrats, Greg. Your future in motion design looks very bright. Do you remember Kara, the new social media site for sharing human-made art? Well, they've hit a milestone of 1 million users, but success comes at a price. Founder Jing Nazang recently shared that their viral growth led to a whopping $100,000 server bill, which is a lot. Now, they're brainstorming ways to monetize the platform sustainably. One interesting idea is going subscription only, which can reduce spam and ban evasions, which is a problem that every social media site has. It'd kind of be like building a VIP club for art lovers. While some might protest at paying, I think Kara has the potential to become a major player in the art and design world. Their stance against AI-generated art sets them apart, creating a haven for human creativity in an increasingly AI-driven landscape. As someone who appreciates AI tools, but who really respects the purity of human-made art, I am definitely rooting for Kara. So if you haven't checked out Kara yet, head to kara.app and join the beta. Who knows, you might just find your next artistic inspiration. Just remember, there's no robots allowed. Joseph Collis, senior motion designer at London-based Together Studio, recently dropped some thoughts about the direction of motion design in his blog post, Poetry in Motion. He sees the industry moving from static video files to more interactive formats, with Rive leading the charge. Rive is gaining serious momentum, showing off cool examples like an inductive stove interface, proving that these days motion design can pop up in even the most unexpected places. Take the Banana Bin app, for example. It's a simple $5 Mac app that adds an animated trash bin to your dock, complete with buzzing flies when it's time to empty it. Now, sure, it's a small thing, but it went very viral, even catching the eye of tech influencer Marquez Brownlee, aka MKBHD. I think this showcases how animation can create delightful user experiences in unexpected ways which can create success for a product. And with Rive making it easier to implement these animations in websites and apps, the possibilities are multiplying daily. And stay tuned for our upcoming Rive Academy series. The first volume is almost done being recorded. More on that soon. There's a new tool on the block for designers. Cosmos is positioning itself as the go-to tool for creatives to gather and organize visual inspiration. Like Pinterest, it lets you save images from around the web, but with features tailored specifically for designers. The browser extension makes it a breeze to save images to your Cosmos account, which you can then organize into clusters, public or private collections that you can share or collaborate on. But here is where it gets very cool. Cosmos uses AI to automatically tag your saved images, making it super easy to search through your growing library of inspiration. And unlike other social media platforms, Cosmos keeps it very clean. There's no notifications, no distractions, no likes or comments. It's just you and your visual inspiration, like a Zen garden for your creative mind. Currently available on web and iOS, Cosmos might just become your new favorite place to store and organize reference imagery. So check it out and let us know what you think in the comments. Legendary Studio Elastic has done it yet again, dropping an absolute banger for Google. This spot is a feast for the eyes, featuring a variety of styles, great movement, and some really interesting texture and lighting choices. What caught my eye is how it deviates from the super clean 3D renders that we've been seeing in hardware spots lately. This one's got a little bit of grit to it, feeling a bit messier and less 
octane porn than we're used to. I especially love the transition where we fly into the laptop screen. It's smooth like butter on a hot GPU. Elastic continues to prove why they're at the top of the game, consistently producing top tier work that pushes visual boundaries. And if you wanna geek out this spot in more detail, head to the link in the description. Trust me, your eyeballs will thank you. Attention all aspiring motion designers. Our summer 2024 mini session is just around the corner, kicking off on August 5th. You can dive into two of our most popular courses, Photoshop and Illustrator Unleashed and After Effects Kickstart, led by world-class instructors, Noel Honig and Jake Bartlett. These courses offer unlimited critique, verified credentials, access to our 24 seven community, monthly live streams, and a lot more. It's like motion design bootcamp, but way more fun and with slightly less pushups. But wait. There's more. We have been secretly working on something special for teams of three or more artists. Our new all access program is in beta, offering more flexibility for companies to upskill their artists with school motion training. The reviews from our beta testers have been phenomenal. It's like having a personal motion design gym membership for your whole team. Interested? Head to schoolemotion.com slash team dash training, fill out the simple form, and we'll reach out to tell you all about it and set up a demo if you're interested. In any case, whether you're a solo artist or part of a team, we've got your back in leveling up your motion design skills, and we hope to see you in class. Attention After Effects aficionados. Alliteration, am I right? Victoria Nice, the principal product manager for After Effects, has put out the call for your favorite tips and tricks. They're bringing back the tip of the day feature to the home screen, and they want to showcase community knowledge. If your tip is chosen, your name will be immortalized, well, for a day at least, when users open After Effects. It's like getting your own star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame, but for motion designers. This is a great move by Adobe, as even seasoned pros can always learn new tricks in this ever-evolving software. So head to the submission form, the link is in the description, and share your wisdom. Who knows, your clever shortcut or workflow hack might just save someone hours of work. And even if you don't get featured, you'll still be helping out your fellow motion designers. So I see it as a win-win. And that is it for this episode of Motion Mondays. Now, let me tell you why we have such strange frame rates in the NTSC standard used in North America. While film has traditionally been shot at 24 frames per second, early black and white televisions had to use the power supply frequency of the electrical system as a timing mechanism to control the frame rate of video being broadcast. And that frequency in North America is 60 Hertz. So because math, 30 frames per second became the standard. But when color television launched, the hue and saturation information had to be carried on the same signal while still being compatible with black and white TVs. Engineers did this by adding that additional information to the signal, but it caused problems because this new color information would often interfere with audio and would cause interference patterns to show up on some screens. So to fix this, the NTSC, National Television Standards Committee, slightly reduced the frame rate to 29.97 frames per second, which allowed the color and audio signals to work without interference. Then when video cameras started being able to shoot at film's frame rate, 24 frames per second, the same fix was applied to them to ensure compatibility with older devices, hence 23.976 frames per second or 23.98 as we normally call it. It's an odd bit of historical trivia and post-production is littered with examples like this, which may not have nearly as much application in the age of streaming, but now you know, and maybe it'll help you win trivia night at the local bar. Remember, our summer session kicks off on August 5th featuring After Effects Kickstart and Photoshop and Illustrator Unleashed. It's the perfect chance to level up your skills or start your motion design journey. And for you team leaders out there, don't forget to check out our new all access program beta. It's been real, I'll see you next week.